Hello everybody, welcome back to the One Point Exploration series. We're finally moving on to some of the major areas of the game, now going to the Altus Plateau. Now this will exclude the capital outskirts and Lyondell, as well as Mount Gilmer. But if you ever take a look at the map itself, you can tell that it's a little bit ambiguous which parts belong to Altus. I'm not going to necessarily argue what does and doesn't consist of it, but I am going to show you this outline to show you what we are going to discuss today. But with that said, stay tuned to the end of the video if you want to see how you can help decide which of the areas are going to do after this one. So look forward to that. But yeah, there's a lot to discuss. Let's get into it. Before the Landsax ambush, you can normally find the ruler set here, but it's not there. And once actually ambushed by Landsax, you can notice that her name is actually a bit different. It is Landsax Ancient Dragon Progeny instead of Ancient Dragon Landsax. And another curious detail is that it's actually playing Fortisax's song instead of Landsax's song. Now apparently Fortisax is Landsax's brother, so perhaps they got those two tracks flipped in this version, we'll have to see later on. But given that they both have custom songs, it's definitely interesting. Maybe they were just picked differently at first and then they, they changed their mind later. There's actually not a lot different besides those two things. The particle effects on the attacks like the lightning and the fire are obviously a little bit unpolished, as a lot of things have been in this game so far in 1.0 version. But it still disappears after a certain amount of HP is taken off of them. And there's actually no difference in the later encounter either, so I won't be discussing it further. While sitting in some of the graces, I noticed that I constantly got around 700 runes as I rested, which means that there's an enemy dying nearby as soon as you rest. This can actually be done in any of the graces here in the southish segment of Altus. I think the enemy that's dying is in that little camp segment, so as long as you're neither, it seems it gives you these souls. Which I wouldn't recommend doing so because it's a very small amount, but I guess you can use this to farm souls. At the very least, maybe it's good if you have a very small mound needed to level up again and you don't want to waste another of your probable runes. But yeah, just a small little bug I figured I'll let you know about. In the Perfumer's Ruins, I didn't find a Secret Order Scarab here, so I couldn't tell you where that is at the moment. When I killed the Omen Killer enemy here, it didn't drop its set. It normally doesn't drop the mask, but it didn't drop anything at all in this one. And when looking around, I found no perfume bottles at all. There's normally two in this area, but I found none of them. The Talisman was still here though. Nearby in the unsightly catacombs, I couldn't find the winged misbegotten ashes, which I do hope I eventually find some misbegotten ashes because I want to see if they are still named Aberration in the ashes as well, or they have their post-release name misbegotten. I also didn't find the Prattling Pate's Apologies carving, and I believe that means we haven't found any of the carvings, so it's possible they're added later on, which I'm not doing box quest line, so I don't know if that really affects anything, but I guess we'll find out eventually. And when making it to the boss, the perfumer is named Perfumer Ulalia instead of Perf Patricia. And as we discussed before, the Misbegotten is called Leonine Aberration, although it's supposed to be called Misbegotten Warrior, so it's vastly different in this case. The Ashes Drops is still called Perfumer Tricia, but it also has the suffix of ashes, I suppose, where it's normally just supposed to be the name of it and not include the word ashes in it. In the Windham Ruins, the Tibia Mariner boss, or what's supposed to be called, their giant skeleton they summon actually is able to hit the boss and stagger it, but it only does a little bit of damage, it doesn't do that much to them. But that's definitely not a thing that happens in current patch. And when you kill it, the Tibia Summons is actually called the Law of the Undying, which is uh, a little cooler. Going on to the Windham Catacombs, for some reason the Capital Outskirts pop-up shows up down here, which doesn't make any sense, it's very far away from the outskirts, so yeah, it beats me that one. The imps that throw lightning pots on the floor here, those pots tend to go through the floor, but they do hit me whenever they hit me directly, but they don't hit the floor at all, they just seem to go through it. So I wonder if maybe the water has some kind of weird clipping interaction with these pots that end up at not only not doing the lightning splash, but also just goes through the floor. Similarly, the lightning traps that shoots arrows to the water don't spread out as it's normally supposed to do, they just kind of hit the floor normally. So a lot of these lightning traps are pretty suboptimal. Now moving to the Sage's Caverns, which is called in this one instead of Sage's Cave, there is no black hood in this chest, and there's also no candle tree wooden shield. So two empty chests right next to each other. Later, there is no raptor talons in this chest right here. And shortly after, there's no skeleton mask, and no raptor's black feathers in these chests either. So, uh, yeah. I feel like this is one big reason to not play the 1.0 version, because there's just a lot of chests that end up being empty promises. Especially after you know what's supposed to be in them. I actually was tempted to use some of these items for fashion, but I guess not. Now, of course, this area has two bosses, so going to the first one, the Necromancer. It's actually called Gareth 
instead of Garrus. Close enough, I suppose, but definitely still different. There's no skeletons that harass you in this area. And it also seems like it's not doing anything with its uh, Ash of War. I guess the idiot can't wield the weapon properly or something, or maybe it's using talismans like we discussed in the last part. But yeah, so as a result, this, air, this boss is actually not threatening at all. It actually can be if you're not super over level or anything. But I also have a plus 9 Moonlight Sword, so there's that. I can't wield the family head, but I think it still does the same thing it does. Just this boss can do it. <laughs> and then the Black Knife Assassin seem pretty much the same, but the drop that it has, the Concealing Veil, is called Dark Silver Veil. And along with that, in the description for 1.0 it says that it hides you at a distance, but it doesn't mention crouching like it does in their post-release. So I don't know if that means that it actually does hide you without having to crouch, or if it's just not something that was included in text. I actually haven't used this item at all ever, so I don't know how it works, PvP or otherwise. In the Send the Hero's Grave, the Black Knife Assassin in front of the area doesn't have a health bar for a boss. It doesn't have the music playing or anything. But whenever I actually killed it, it still had the enemy failed prompt in it, so that was definitely very confusing. Nothing to comment on the Black Knife as far as I can tell. And the only other change I notice here is that there's no Lion Del Sol Drashes in the actual area either. In the Perfumer's Grotto, I noticed that the Perfumers have a bluish shield for that one thing that's supposed to reduce the next attack that they take. But it actually seems to take multiple hits, so it seems like it might be a range of damage you have to do in order to break them. Because if they're blocking, it did take a few hits for me to break their bubble. But if they just took a straight hit, it did break immediately. That did make me curious and made me want to test and see if that works the same for us. But no, it seems like it's just one hit, like normal. And as you can see, our bubble is also blue. There's the more empty chest here. There's lacking a perfume bottle and a living jar shard. And for the boss, everything seemed the same except, as we discussed in Lyrania, the Omen Killer are called Forsaken in this version. Now going more north into the Altus Plateau. The Altus Plateau Merchant has this stock, which if you notice has infinite viable golems, great arrows. Now I wouldn't have noticed this even a couple weeks ago because I never even knew these existed until I needed them. But now that I know you can't buy them at all and that you normally have to farm them and it's a really bad drop rate, this did blow my mind a bit. A commenter pointed out that you actually can get the magic arrows as well and in, in Pedia's Merchant Infinite, which I also didn't know existed or were like rare or anything. But yeah, so if you've been wanting to use these specifically, I guess if you do a 1.0 play that you could do that. And I guess best case scenario, if you know somebody or want to do it yourself, someone could buy the full stock of these and then eventually update their patch to the current patch and just be able to trade them back and forth with a cloud storage or something. Hell, maybe I'll even do that eventually to have this be a stock I can access eventually. But I should warn you that if you do a patch from 1.0 and load the characters, you will no longer be able to down patch back down unless you clear the entire save file. So yeah, I might eventually become a golems, gray arrows, mule or something. <laughs> the warp tower next to the merchant takes you to a slightly different spot. It actually takes you closer to the windmill village, the Manula, instead of putting you on the other side of the bridge. Which, in a way, could be useful, but given that there's a grace in that village, I would say it's probably not as useful as just having this warp tower to be able to get across the other part of the bridge faster. Whenever I killed this giant blood slime thingy, its body actually didn't disappear, it just kind of flattened and then stayed there. And I even tried to reload it and see if that would disappear, but now it's still there, so I guess these just have a body afterwards, which is, uh, I guess, fine, but very distracting. I couldn't find the Radiant Gold Mask here, so I do wonder if maybe I have to complete the quest line to get it. That would kind of make sense, and how normally you would get things like this. But we'll see at the very end of the game, I suppose. The Worm Phase enemies, the normal ones, have the normal Death Blight Cloud effect. The black with the small yellow particle effects. Which I normally wouldn't comment on, but I did notice that the Basilisks have a purplish cloud instead of this. Which I actually would see a little bit later on in this exploration. So if you haven't seen it by any chance, this is how the Basilisks cloud looked like. You get the Golden Slam Ash of War from this Scarab, which normally drops a Summerstone 5 in post-release. And the one that normally drops it in post-release just doesn't exist. So I guess we just lost out of Stone 5. I couldn't find the Icon Shield in 1.0. Which, as a Demon Souls fan, is a little sad, but I guess it is what it is. I kept a close eye on the Mirage Rise riddle, but the only thing that I noticed that was different was that whenever you touch the phantoms, quote unquote, you don't have an animation for actually touching them, it just goes away. Oh, and it's called the Glen Sunrise, as per usual. The boss fight for the Warm Face seemed the same, but it is playing the dragon theme, because of course it is. Now making our way to the old Altus Tunnel, 
I could not find the Bolt Drake Talisman plus one in here or the Troll Hammer. I'm not too familiar with these areas, so I was a little skeptical, but yeah, I looked around. I didn't find him anywhere. And similarly, in the Altus Tunnel, I couldn't find the Arsenal Charm plus one. Now, we do have the Great Arsenal Charm from the Great Jar, so we're not really hurting. It's just, yeah. When I was looking through the Windmill Villages, I noticed that that's a little bit of an error in the East and West Windmill Pastures labels. As you can see, the West one is not in the East, and the East is not in the West. And there's one label that's missing entirely, but... Just these two alone are really funny. It really has some weast energy. When I got to the Godskin Apostle, it actually is playing the right song this time, the Godskin Apostle song. Which is really weird because we already had a Godskin Apostle and that one's playing a different song, the one in Divine Tower. So I don't know what's up with that. It's not even a Noble versus Apostle situation, it's just the same enemy. <laughs> now making our way to the Shaded Castle and the surrounding areas. First thing you can see right away when you get to the Shaded Castle is that there's some areas where the textures are just not there. It's literally just a white geometry. And Reloading doesn't fix it or anything. It's just how it is. <laughs> I, tried, I, looked at this, I looked at this before in a different uh, character and it's also like this. So again, very clearly unpolished version of the game, but something's straight up missing. This Scarlet Rot Meralda, their Scarlet Rot Cloud seems to be invisible for the most part. One of the smaller ones has an attack or two that does show the cloud, but most of it doesn't. But it's still there. I can still get Scarlet Rot from being near it. Around the corner when fighting Malay Marias, I noticed that their attacks cause bleed from their Antsper Rapier, which definitely made me curious right away to see if the item that the drop would be causing bleed. And sure enough, once it dropped it, it does say that it causes hemorrhage, which is interesting because even the description mentions that it has Scarlet Rot in it. So, oh, and it also doesn't drop its set, the Mariah set. Now going inside the Shadow Castle, some of the textures are also goofed inside of it. There's normally a perfume bottle right here, but it's not there. I did however find a ceremonial pot here, which I don't believe it's supposed to be there normally. Right before the Elmer boss, I found Patches here, but not in his normal questline form. He's just kind of standing there. <laughs> it's like I, I couldn't interact with him. I even started punching him to see if maybe he could get mad or anything, but I have a health bar or anything. And once I actually went to look at his questline and stuff, I haven't even done it in this character yet. So I actually did it a little bit. Here's a stock. I don't think I showed that properly last time when we were in Lingrave. I don't know, it feels like maybe this is just an oversight where they have Patches' model here, like programmed in, but it's not supposed to be hidden until you get to this part of the quest line. But they just didn't do that yet, so it's, he's just here standing. <laughs> it's really weird, I don't know. Now when we're actually doing the Elmer fight, it's playing the Grave Warden song instead of the Fallen Knights song. And when killing it, it doesn't drop the Great Shield, only the Executioner Sword, which is kind of for trophies, so let's hope that that still counts. Now on our way to the path to the capital outskirts, but not actually the outskirts of this video, I noticed that the dual Tree Sentinels both have torches instead of one having a torch and one having the Great Shield. And whenever I kill both as normal, they didn't drop the Hero Rune, but they did drop the Earth Tree Great Shield, only that the Golden Retaliation Ash of War is called Golden Deflection, or Magical Reversal in the description. Okay, and before ending, there was a ton of items that had name changes, so I just wanted to list them all at once, kind of like in Kayla's video. I did have a Golem's Halberd dropped, but it was called Golem's Pole Arm in 1.0. Same with the Depraved Perfumer's Trousers, but they were called Fallen Perfumer's Trousers. I assume the whole set goes like this. The Navy Hood was called Navy Cloak. The Ritual Sword Talisman was called Champion Sword Talisman. The Great Shield Talisman was called Shield Talisman, which might help it distinguish between the Dragon Crest or whatever it's called later on. Unseen Blade was called Conceal Armament. Similarly, Unseal Form was called Conceal Presence. Great Heal was called Medium Heal. That one was quite funny to me, I don't know. Shared Order is called Helic Tree Vow. That was interesting. I did continue Melissa's questline. Nothing to note so far, but I didn't notice that Pest Thread is called Swarm of Threads. And after getting it, I didn't get any special dialogue from what's his name? He just kind of acted as normal. The Stormcolor Church is called Stormcolor Chapel. Close enough. The Amber Starlight is called Starlight Amber. Also close enough. Gravestone are called Compound Stone. And Slumbering Egg is called Moon Egg. Alright, that should be all for the video. This one should be a little bit on the longer side. Kind of like most of the older parts, which I'm happy about. 
Something about not hitting 10 minutes just doesn't feel right to me. I don't know. It's not even the ad thing. I don't usually put ads in the middle of the video. They're not like more than 15 minutes or so, but I don't know. Just feels better to have a double digit number, I guess. <laughs> anyway, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you folks are able to pick which air I'm going to do next. And that is by voting on a community poll that should already be up by the time this video is up. Should also be in the description and all that in the comments. But it is to vote between doing Lindell and the capital outskirts and all that, excluding the shunning grounds. So that's going to be for later. Or we could also do Mount Gilmer, including Volcano Manor, most likely, unless I've asked too many changes. I want to break it up into parts. But either way, I would just work on that after. So yeah, go vote on that if you want to see one more than the other. But like I do mention in the committee post as well, I probably won't put out a video for this all February. So until March is probably when the next part's going to be. Because I do have some other videos I want to work on that are going to take some time. And I mean, just in general, it might help me to have a little bit of a break from this series. So. Just heads up. If you just want to see one of these areas really, really bad, it probably would be best of all for that first. But just be warned that it'll be a, a while. But regardless, they're both big areas, so you know, hopefully be plenty of content to discuss by then. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video as well. If you liked it and want to see more of this series, do consider subscribing along with becoming a member of the channel. There's a ton of parts previous to this if you haven't seen them yet and if you're a new viewer of the series. So there's definitely not plenty to sink your teeth in for a while until the next part. But yeah, regardless, thank you for watching. Do vote on what part you'd like to see next between Lyondell and Mount Gilmer. I hope to see you again in March or February if you want to see my other videos. <laughs> but yeah, have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.